Okay, now that we've looked at evaluating limits from a graph, let's take a look at evaluating limits from a table of values. Now, we know that anytime I have a graph, that consists of a bunch of points. Well, if I was given a table of points, as you take a look at this table, as my x values approach 1 from the left of 1 and approach 1 from the right of 1, if we examine what happens to my y values, well, aren't these y values to the left of 1? Aren't they getting closer and closer to the number 3, it looks like? If you take a look, 2.3, 2.7, 2.97, 2.997, it looks like the left side is approaching 3. From the right, it looks like my y values are getting closer and closer to 3 as well. So we would say that the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is going to be 3. And that's how we can use a table of values. Now, if you had to use your calculator, sometimes you're going to have to, you're going to be given a function and just going to have to type in these x values into your calculator, into the equation, and figure out what you're getting for y to fill in these tables. But if the left side and the right side look like they're approaching the same value of 3, or whatever value, if they're approaching the same value, then that'll be the limit. Okay, now the next thing we want to look at is evaluating limits where holes exist. Well, again, we know that holes can exist if something from the denominator cancels. So in this problem, if I can try and factor, and you have to have good factoring skills in calculus, if I can try and factor this guy, then we need to write the limit as x approaches two-thirds until I plug in the two-thirds. Again, if I plug two-thirds in right now into the denominator, I would get zero, which is undefined. And we know that this limit can exist as long as a hole is created at two-thirds. Okay? So, if I try to factor this top, that would factor into x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. You should check my factoring. And that's going to be over 3x minus 2. Well, again, since the 3x minus 2s cancel... This now becomes just the limit as x approaches 2 thirds. And now I'm only left with the expression x minus 2. So if I plug in 2 thirds for x now, I would just get negative 1 and 2 thirds for this expression. And I'm wrong, that's x minus 3. My bad. So I get negative 2 and 2 thirds, negative 2 and 1 third. So this limit of 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 over 3x minus 2 would just be negative 2 and 1 third. And that's your y value or your limit value that you're approaching. Now, if you need to, you can pause the video, but you should try and factor and see if you can get this to cancel um, in this problem and in this problem. Okay? Um, there's another problem that we could, should consider um, that we can take a look at later on. But now let's move on to complex fractions. Remember that a complex fraction is just a fraction within a fraction, right? If I've got fractions within fraction, a fraction, that's called a complex fraction. I've shown the work here just to move things along. If you need to pause it and copy it down, you can. With complex fractions, right now if I plug a 0 in for this x or a 0 in for this x, 0 in this first x would be okay, because I wouldn't get 0 in a denominator. But 0 in this bottom x would create a 0 in the denominator, which means this is an undefined value. Well, that's going to be hard to find the limit, but if I can get this x to cancel somehow, that means there must be a hole at 0. So, using complex fraction skills, and again, check my work out. I multiply by the LCD to create this single simple fraction. I then simplify the top by just subtracting 2 minus 2 plus x. I get negative x over 2x times 2 plus x. The x's cancel, giving me negative 1 over 2 times 2 plus x. And notice that x that was causing zero, causing a 0 in the denominator got canceled out. So there must be a hole at x equals 0. So I know that if I just plug in 0 into the simplified expression, that will be the limit's value. So plugging in a 0 for x, I would get negative 1 fourth as my overall limit. 
The next type of algebra that we can use to evaluate a limit using it for holes is something called using the conjugate. And again, I've already shown the work here just to speed things along. If you need to talk about this in class, we can. Remember that a conjugate is of an expression is just the same expression. So on the top here, if I've got an, a minus sign here between the two square roots, the conjugate is the same thing, but just with a plus sign. Whenever you multiply conjugates, we know we end up getting the first number times itself, which is x plus 2, because the square root sign would cancel. And then a negative times a positive is negative. That's where that minus sign comes from. And then I would get the last number times itself. So square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. Now, if I multiply the top of the fraction by the conjugate, then I'm going to multiply the bottom of the fraction by the conjugate to make sure that I'm not changing the fraction. Notice I didn't, even though I multiplied out the top, I did not multiply out the bottom because, again, since 1 is what I'm approaching and I put a 1 in the denominator here, that's what would give me undefined. I'm trying to get this x minus 1 to cancel, right? That's my goal. Well, if I simplify this numerator, x plus 2 minus 3 just becomes x minus 1. And now this x minus 1 and that x minus 1 on the bottom cancel. There must be a hole at x equals 1. And now, because I know there's a hole at x equals 1, I can just plug in 1 for x in the simplified expression. And simplifying, I would just get 1 over 2 square roots of 3. And you might want to think about how I got that. Okay, the next problem. Sometimes you're going to be able to just plug in the x value that you're given. If I'm, if I'm given a function that's continuous everywhere, in other words, there's no discontinuities, the domain has no restrictions. If that's the case, like in this case, I've got a parabola. We know that quadratics have no domain restrictions. Because of that, I can just go ahead and plug negative 2 in wherever I see an x. And by doing the math, whatever answer I get will be the value of the limit. Now, this is just a unit circle question. You guys try doing this one. We know that sine has no domain restrictions. So you can just plug pi over 4 and then try that problem out. And then tell me what you get, okay? All righty. And that is limits. Um, how we find the y value as we're, we approach a given x value. Okay, how we find the y value that we're approaching. All right, folks, uh, that's it. Hopefully these weren't too long. Hopefully they were clear. If you have questions, write them down and, and we can talk about them on Monday. Bye now.